Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna look at part two of Michael and Joe's incredible coral collection, focusing on some behind the scenes details, like what sort of parameters they run, what sort of maintenance they do on their systems, what sort of infrastructure they have, and of course, a little bit of a deeper dive into the new local fish shore that they are co-owners of, Reeftopia. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And I don't know about you guys at home, but I am still personally coming to terms with all of those two die for corals that I saw at Michael and Joe's collection in last week's video. If you're yet to check that out, I highly recommend you get yourself a comfortable seat, a drink and maybe a little snack because it is an hour and 20 minutes of incredible coral goodness. And um, I did touch on in that video that we would do a part two just to have a look at some things around the infrastructure of Michael's tanks, what sort of equipment he runs, what sort of uh, parameters he chases, what sort of uh, reefing programs or methodologies he follows. And of course, to have a little bit more of a discussion about the store or the new local fish store that he is co-owner of with Michael park setting up in Queensland called Reeftopia. So I guess there's not too much more of a preface I can add other than to put a microphone on Michael. We'll go chat to the man himself and find out all of the juicy details and what makes all of those incredible corals look just as fantastic as they do. Let's roll. All right, now as promised the other week when we did a video showcasing the incredible array of corals that Michael and Joe have here in their beautiful Sydney home, I did touch on that we would do another video going over just the uh, infrastructure, what makes these tanks run, any sort of maintenance, any sort of particular parameters you chase, any programs, and of course talk about, I mean we touched on a little bit last time about your reefing history and journey to get this far yeah. because I mean this sort of facility doesn't just happen overnight. <laughs> so I'm super curious to find out where things go from here, but um, before we get into that, maybe let's start by having a look at... Um, what uh, equipment you run on these tanks and what sort of things have worked for you and have not worked for you over the years? Sure. Overall, in terms of philosophy is keeping it simple. So okay. in terms of, it's just a skimmer, lights. Yes. In this tank, I've got a refugium. Yes. And then dosing and then that's really it. I don't run UV, sure. ozone. Um, I don't have filter socks, yep, yep. Um, no mechanical filtration, so I really try to keep it as simple as possible. Very simple system. Now you say just a skimmer, but I mean, we've got a big Royal exclusive yeah. skimmer there. I mean, it's a quality yeah. skimmer. Um, your fuge is lit up there by a uh, Kessel fuge light. Yes. Um, what sort of return pumps are you running on, on these systems? Uh, Vectra M2. M2, yep. yep. Yep, yep, beautiful, yeah, nicely done there. And I see you've got the uh, Shago titanium heaters. Yep. Beautiful, I'm running uh, Kamoas on for the doses. Correct. Yeah, nice, nice. And and, I, and, and also Apex for the Apex controls. Apex as well, yep, 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 for some management. Now, I think we did touch on the video the other week about uh, the, uh, considering that you're just dosing in these systems and the amount of coral load you've got in them, what sort of volume of dosing are you doing and what elements are you dosing into the system? Um, in terms of the major elements, I'm dosing calcium, alk, yes. and a little bit of magnesium. Okay. Now, this is my own kind of theory on magnesium um, yes. and just what I've noticed throughout all the four tanks. Sure. I've found that once your trace is dosed consistently, mm -hmm. the corals don't take up that much ma magnesium. Okay, okay. But only when the traces are not being supplemented, yes. then I feel that they use magnesium. Interesting theory, yeah, okay, um, I can see that. Yeah, they use that as a substitute. Yeah, 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 so yeah. say for instance, if there's no strontium or something along those lines, maybe yes. then they dip into magnesium. For sure. I have read papers that they can switch between yep. different types of elements yep. to do a similar thing. They prefer one thing than another. But in terms of all the systems, there's not much in terms of magnesium. Yeah, right. I yeah. mean, when you think about it on a human level, which I always like to relate corals yep. back to humans, which probably is a horrendous thought. But um, mm. when, when you think about it, like uh, I don't really like soup, but if I have no other food available, I will eat soup. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, am I probably going to be my happiest and uh, most cheerful if I'm just eating soup three meals a day mm. every day of the week? Probably not. I'm probably going to be a lot more loving life if I'm, you know, having. Uh, some sandwiches or burgers or something <laughs> along the line. And I imagine the corals are probably the same. And uh, yep. magnesium is a funny element like that. I mean, I work one day a week in my local fish shop 
and the number of varied results I hear from people that are dosing copious amounts of magnesium, those who are, haven't dosed magnesium in months, um, it, it does seem to be one of those things that is still very much a unknown to us. Correct. And um, I, I absolutely take uh, some uh, mm. heed to your theory there and that it could well be substituted in, in place of other uh, trace elements. Yeah, so I'd dose those three. Yes. And then on top of that, I'd do all the traces individually. Okay, right. So by individual traces, I mean I'd dose manganese by yes. itself, strontium by itself, and then so on and so forth. Yeah, right. What sort yeah. of uh, program are you following for the uh, trace elements? So that I have to give massive shout out to Reef Moonshine. Yeah, nice. Andre yeah. over there in America, Correct. Reef yeah. Moonshine does a fantastic job. So uh, big tip of the cap to Andre. And uh, your Reef Moonshine program on these systems, how sort of intense is that? What sort of number of elements are you dosing and are you manually doing that or are you automated it or yeah so i'm manually doing that so yep. one big benefit of that is i don't do water changes yeah right yep. so unless if something is drastically going wrong yes or say for instance i've done a cipro treatment and i need to flush it out of the system sure or there's something that's just not quite right then i yes. will yes but on most of the systems i don't do any water changes just maintain the elements yep and like for me from a reefing perspective the key thing is time yes uh, of course uh, running a business having yeah. kids it's just yeah, you yeah. don't have time so as much as we'd love to say that reefing is our number one priority i mean you'd probably be a, a pretty lonely man if that was the case uh, <laughs> you've got a beautiful so. family and um, we also unfortunately still have to do things to be able to afford this beautiful hobby so Occasionally at times, reefing does have to come down in the priorities. Correct, and, um, yeah. Yeah, the more time you can save doing, not doing things you don't enjoy so that you can do things you do enjoy is always going to lead to more success in the hobby. Yeah, so every night I just dose those uh, specific elements. Yep, yep. Across the four tanks, that might take me about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then that's, and I guess that's also a good check on the tank and you are just naturally closer to it because you're checking on a daily basis. Absolutely a man of my own heart. I, I'm yeah. known for automating so much in my tanks, yet my trace elements are something that I still manually dose and count drops every day. It's the thing I do enjoy and it yeah. is something that I do like to take that time to have a look over yeah. the tanks. And, and I've check. tried doing that on dosing containers, but yes. when you're dosing one mil, no matter how <laughs> accurate it is or you're using Apex, it's just... It's a yeah. high risk too, you yeah. know. Um, and I don't know about yourself and with these systems, but I also find uh, with the trace elements, if by chance you, you do miss a day, it's not the end of the world. It's not like Correct. your macro elements where, you know, if, you're, if you miss out on 600 mil of alk that day, yep. it, it's going to have a big effect. If you miss out on a, a milliliter of... Um, or 0.8 of a milliliter of iodine or something that day, the world won't end. That's you right. just pick up the same amount the next day and you're all good. Um, so no, that's, that makes sense. And the um, the brand of elements that you're using, uh, oh, you touched on the reef moonshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's all reef moonshine. And the other thing, having the four systems, and I kind of alluded to it um, last time, was just in terms of what the tanks take up, yes. it's so varied across all the different yeah, tanks. Yeah, yeah. It's um, kind of, if there was key snapshots that I'll give after running these tanks, is SPS soak up a lot of strontium. Yes. Fluoride. Yes. And there's also talks about barium where it's not used in reef tank, but right. I've seen firsthand if barium is below five, yes. that you can get RTN, STN. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of that system, I tend to overdose those quite sure. a bit. Yep. Whereas in the LPS system here, iodine, yes. I find softies. Yep. Zoas, they tend to soak up a little bit more sure. iodine. Yes. In the goni tank, it's manganese. <laughs> yep. Like yep. the manganese in such a small tank in here. Yes. Is like two and a half times the consumption of this. Yeah. Tank. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's another very uh, valid thing to point out too. That, um, I'm not sure if it was immediately obvious before that each of the three systems in here plus your uh, tank in the other room are all isolated. They're, they're not Correct, connected yeah. sumps. Correct, all yeah. on their own skimmers, their own, uh, their own chillers, their own return pumps. They are separate systems, which is obviously, a, it's, a, it's a deliberate thing. It's, I mean, it's good and bad. It's, of course. I, I mean, probably one of the main reasons is I'm terrible with my hands, so, <laughs> so I can't do the plumbing. <laughs> hey, we've all got our skill sets, man. And I wouldn't say things are too bad in here. You've got a great facility in here, so you can't be too bad. Yeah, but, uh, so ideally I probably should hook up this water box somehow, but it just came in. Also, just how we arrived at that tank before was thinking that maybe it was the um, coral warfare from of the Goni. Yeah, so we yeah. kind of went down that path. 
But now being on the Reef Moonshine system too, mm -hmm. because you can customize and individualize every tank, yes. it doesn't matter that it's yeah. also separate water. If anything, it's in exactly, a benefit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, I mean, they've got uh, on their uh, website, they've got the handbook, which explains the entire process, which is free, by the way. There's no, there's no expense. You, if you wanted to, you can follow the Reef Moonshiners program without ever buying a single one of their products. No. You can, it's talking about trace elements regardless yeah. of the brand you use. Yeah. Um, you can also use their free, again, their spreadsheet, which you can put in, you can import your uh, ICP, um, put all your elements in there, and obviously some details on your tank, and uh, it'll spit out exactly your sort of dosage each day. So, I mean, it's probably gonna be quick enough to import those values in, have a, a different dosing regime for each tank, and then you can just, for that 10 minutes of your R out here, spinning with the tanks, you can quickly reference that and, um, and do your dosages. So, yeah. it makes life a bit easier, I guess. Yeah. And if you're not doing water changes, you, I mean, if it means you don't have to do four separate water changes, the benefits probably do outweigh the downsides of having these tanks isolated particularly when you've got the number of, of high-end pieces that you do, if you did have something run astray, which, I mean, you were no stranger to, you've had some challenges yeah. in your reefing career, yeah. um, having them isolated to that one system is gonna, it's just gonna keep your head above water at times, no. <laughs> I'd imagine. And I think also because the tanks are so different, Yes. Previously, I've tried many, many different programs. Yes. And if it's just one SOC standard formula where you're dosing into the tanks, yep. if you've kept that system for a year, two years, then you might be depleted in one, but excess sure. in another, just yes. because of the corals that you of have. Course. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I noticed in my previous systems. Mm. But now with the ICPs and then individualized dosing for each of the different tanks, it means yes. it's a little bit more tailored. Definitely tailored, yeah. 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 Now, Speaking of parameters, I mean, we're not, we don't yeah. need to go through the uh, trace elements because we know that you yeah. do follow the Reef Moonshiner program and their target elements are well publicized and I'll be sure yeah. to put a link um, to their site below. Around your main elements, like around your phosphate, nitrates, uh, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, what sure. sort of levels are you chasing and do they differ from tank to tank or are all they roughly all the same? Generally, I try to target the same, but because of the coral consumption, it's a little bit different sure. between the tanks. Okay. Um, I do test weekly. Yes. Um, and if the tank's having issues, then I'll test twice a week. But in sure. terms of those parameters, alk I like to keep about 8.6. Okay, yep. Calcium about 420. Yep. Uh, magnesium about 1350 to 1400. Sure. I have read for LPS, it's better to keep it a little bit higher. Sure. I have bumped it up to like 1500 even. Okay. But I haven't noticed a noticeable no difference. difference. Sure. Um, in this tank at the moment, I tested yesterday, it was about 1470. Okay. So a little bit higher. Come up a little and bit. And I'm not dosing magnesium, so yeah, it's just right. slowly coming down over time and mm -hmm. haven't really noticed a difference yeah, yet. Right. Well, there's no uh, crazy values there. I mean, no, it's all- it's all pretty stock standard. Pretty yeah. stock standard. And obviously the consistency is the key there. I mean- Yeah, consistency the key um, especially in the SPS tank that's probably yeah. the one that I've had the most trouble in stabilizing sure yeah and then some of the colors compared to previous systems isn't 100% there just yet yeah and I just put it down to consistency it takes time the system's yeah. only a year old correct um, yeah you know with that yeah. amount of SPS in there yeah um, the colors you have are crazy to think of for a year and in terms of um, the nutrients phosphate mm -hmm. I keep at about 0.1 to 0.15 depending on the system sure yep some of the LPS Goni tanks I keep a little bit dirtier. Yes. Uh, in the SPS is probably a little bit below 0.1. Okay. And then nitrate about 10 to 15. Yep. Anytime it goes below 10, yes. I like to just top it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I have had nitrate just bottom out of the blue in some of the systems. Yeah. Even the Goni tank, because I've only got three fish in there. Yes. Just not a lot of fish poop. Well, and just, I was going to yeah. say, even on this system, which has some massive, massive fish in there, mm. fish per coral load, it's very, very light. Yeah. Um, no, so to keep nutrients at those levels, which, I mean, they're obviously not ultra low, but they're, they're not high by any stretch of the imagination, but you must have to supplement or feed or or remove some export or something to keep you i imagine you'd be keeping the figures up rather than trying correct to keep the yeah down. and i yeah. think all the systems is just depending on what you're keeping so that's why here i don't have any mechanical filtration sure i don't yeah. need the no there's no use the, pulling nutrients out of you're gonna have yeah. to put them back in again yeah. and just create i would say every job. month or so i'll probably go and suck out the detritus sure uh, but in terms of feeding i feed frozen yes 
Um, there was actually a period of time where we would make our own frozen. Yes. But maybe yes. because I didn't wash or rinse or treat it, I've actually noticed that when I when we fed our own frozen, the phosphate just went through the roof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So depending on what it is, I might dabble in some of our own, or a lot of times I just mix like a concoction of the frozen that you would buy from a local fish store. So your mice, yep. lobster eggs. Yep krill those types of things it's all in, and yeah. then there's always nori so every day i'll put a few clips of nori but apart from that yep. it's nothing crazy yep but once i do notice that the phosphate is starting to dip low yes i'll then add rephroids okay yeah yeah yep. and that's probably the most in the sps tank so yeah right at the moment i'll say maybe twice a week i might just put some rephroids in there yep yep um i don't dose any aminos okay yeah i've yep. actually noticed previously when i dose too many things i just got maybe the weird bacterial or and just I was going to say there is a theory circling at the moment yeah. I mean we touched on in the previous video about uh, the bacterial challenges mm. and there is a theory going around that uh, some of the bacterial strains are potentially linked to some types of amino acids out right, there yeah. and I say potentially just to avoid all legal courses I'm not going to name any brands or anything like that but it's a theory that's being investigated so um yeah. I mean, by all means, if you've been having success with amino acids, don't stop dosing them. But yep. um, it is a space that I am definitely watching with some uh, interest at the moment. Yeah. And I mean, maybe partly back then when I had a lot of those bacterial issues, I was also pretty heavy on sure. the amino. It's yes. just, you think yep. that ill. And then after I've stopped, maybe because of these systems, I haven't actually noticed too much of a difference. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yep. So really just outside of tracing the majors and feeding the fish, there's That's nothing. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you touched on the, you don't do water changes in unless you know there's a absolutely need to absolutely I, I, yeah need I, to. yeah i detest doing water changes sure yeah yep. when you yeah. do use more water uh, artificial natural uh so so, so, yep. so, so artificial, artificial yep. so use tro tropic marin yep great yep. yeah good quality salt yeah yep. and yep. i've had that run the icp on it and it's pretty close to what i'm trying to keep things at so it just naturally became, yeah, yeah. yeah it's better than if you have to do a big change and then you have to buffer things to get it back to your level and Yep, yep. find a level that you're happy with and if the salt matches that, yep. happy days. So yeah, no water changes less absolutely necessary. Testing once a week. I mean, obviously um, with this number of coral in these systems, there's gonna be just a lot of uh, maintenance on the corals so making sure things don't get knocked over make sure they're not touching each yeah, other. Yeah, that's probably the main thing. At the <laughs> moment, because it's so jam packed, yes. the deaths are through being knocked, yep. fighting, or just overshading. Sometimes <laughs> sure. I forget about a coral, come yep. back a couple of weeks and it's just, yeah. It just hasn't seen the light. In those Correct, two and it's just like bleached out. <laughs> for yeah. sure, for sure. Well, that's yep. amazingly, uh, relatively, I mean, considering the number of corals and specimens and, and just water volume you have in here, that's not too bad of a maintenance level, which is, which is incredible to think of really yeah and that was kind of the mandate that my missus gave to me she was yes. like look if you're going to try to keep this and yep. then with the two kids yep. you have to make it workable it's still going to be a family yeah. Man, yeah and it's i mean gone through many different systems the previous system that i had the most success with was a continuous water change yes. system yep so we had it hooked up and then every day it will draw out 20 liters put yep. in 20 liters yep and then prior to dosing traces that was by far the system that i had the most success in sure so at one point when we were moving here, we were going to replicate the same system. Yes. So I bought this like, you know, 500 liter drum. Don't even know where we're going to put it here. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty tight. Uh, but I'm glad we didn't go down that path. Yeah, yeah. To just yeah. You found yeah. a method that works for you. Yeah. That's no, that's really cool. Now. I mean, in the previous video, we touched on how um, we're talking maybe about four or five years ago, roughly. Uh, I'll use I think my fingers on screen with inverted commas here to say yeah. uh, you were just a hobbyist then. Um, <laughs> and you had a, a fairly humble uh, single five foot tank um, that you'd made some frags from. And you came along to an event um, that uh, I was fortunate enough to be involved with uh, frag stock at uh, Bespoke Aquariums here in Sydney. Um, and that was a huge turnout. We had like 500 people come oh, to Oh, it was it. crazy. There was people lined out on the road, yeah. <laughs> in fact, amazing. the line up around the block was that big that we had people come in that were not even reefers just because they saw a big line. <laughs> in, in Western Sydney, a big line of people on a, like a, a, I think it was a Friday night or something, out into the street to they're like, something good's happening, we have to come in. And uh, both yourself and Joe um, had a good time and you sold some frags and that really, I mean, Obviously, to have a five foot tank with some pieces and to be fragging, the bug had already bitten a little bit by that stage, but yeah. uh, that just really just got it to sink its, its teeth in and um, escalated to where we stand today, having all of these systems and beautiful corals. Wh where does one go from here? Like, 
You mentioned, obviously, you've got a, a beautiful young family now and um, you, you run your own business. So, I mean, you, you have plenty of uh, uh, things competing for your time uh, as well as these systems. But from the enthusiasm and joy I've seen in your face from filming both of these videos, I can tell that you have not lost no. a skerrick of passion for this <laughs> hobby. And I, I dare to ask where things go from here because um, I mean this is about as big as you can get in a home system. No, I think then the only natural progression was from here is we're going to be opening up our own store. Yeah, right. Yeah, nice, so, nice. Um, yeah, super excited. It's uh, It's been a long time coming. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Tell us some details. So it's in partnership with Bicycle Park. Yes. And it's not going to be in Sydney, but it's going to be in Brisbane. Yeah, and right, right. And the store right. is called Reeftopia. Reeftopia, cool name. I like it. Now, how, how's the logistics of that work w with opening a shop up in another state? And uh, for people overseas, I mean, I'll put a, a map on screen now to show how far Sydney is away from Brisbane. That's a, that's a long, long distance. How's that going to work? How, what's, the, what's the plan? How are you going to be involved in, sure, in the store sure. and yeah yeah sure. logistically that's a challenge yeah so in terms of the frags yes. we'll grow them here okay and then we'll send them up to the store yes um michael park will do the day-to-day -day running of the sure. store yep yep he's well yeah. accomplished in that space yep and uh if when we do go up to the wholesalers i'm going to be the first one jumping on the plane to go. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward. hopefully that means i can get an invite to some of these yeah, wholesaler tours absolutely, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> nothing i love more than getting my foot yeah. in the door of a wholesaler no, but um that's awesome so this this will effectively become uh your your coral farm uh, to supply these beautiful pieces that we've seen. I, I mean, we'll, we've had some B-roll in this video, but if you haven't seen the previous video that we did of Michael and Joe's system here, where we went through, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you we went through every single coral in the place because I mean, the video would be like three weeks long, but we went through some of the show pieces and I had a look at some of the frags and stuff. And to know that those corals are gonna be available at a local fish store here in Australia. And uh, I believe you guys will be doing a uh, mail order as well. So. Um, it, it, even if you can't get to Brisbane, you'll be able to peruse through the website and have a look at what's available and get these items delivered to your door, which will be super, super cool. Yeah, no, can't wait. I mean, that probably also explains a little bit why the tanks are just so jam-packed. There's <laughs> yeah. just been delay after delay for the store. So sure. that's why once we've fragged it, now the frags have turned into mothers and it, those will be the ones that will be sending up to the stores. Definitely. So, yeah. now, you say that it's been delay after delay. Obviously, a, a brand new retail local fish store is not something that just happens overnight. It takes us through a little bit of the journey as to um, you, you've been enjoying your reef keeping. <laughs> you've got a lot of nice corals here. How does one then go, you know what, I might open a shop in another, in another state. What leads to that process, um, and and this is a, a building that uh, has been fitted out specifically for a reef store, not a non aquarium store. I don't believe there's no fresh water there. It's just no, just just salt water. Purely yeah. reef, just the salty stuff which we like. I mean, that's a challenge. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell us some of the the challenges you faced in setting that up. I guess the biggest challenge was finding the site. Yep. And it was just, um, at the time, this was going on about a year, year and a half ago, it was wow, just yeah. very difficult to find yes. a site. And eventually the site that we found was being newly built. Yes. And since then it's been COVID. Yes. There's been massive rain in Brisbane. Yep. So the whole process has been delayed upwards of a year. Yes. yes. So finally to be here and to be within a month or so of opening is actually incredible. Very, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you can be sure that uh, obviously for the viewers of Parker's Reef, I will be up there for the opening. You'll be able to see plenty of footage there. And um, from what I know, there's going to be a lot of uh, people from the industry there all celebrating the success of opening a shop and um, just having, you know, as us reefers tend to do, a bit of a good party at the same time. So we'll be sure to have plenty of coverage of the store there and um, be sure to show you some of the uh, opening specials and some of the crazy corals you can pick up if you want to have any of these ridiculous pieces that you see throughout these systems here there'll be plenty of these available along with some other obviously um wild caught pieces i imagine as well yep. won't be just supplied from what you've got here um, as much as you've got a ridiculous amount of coral here 
you, you will have suppliers from um, all sorts of... Uh, yeah, no, I've heard the suppliers have been stashing away a special yeah, collection nice, for nice. us. So, yeah. Well, I guess that's the silver lining to, um, or the double edge of a sword, I guess. Things like uh, reef stock, which unfortunately didn't go ahead um, this year here in Australia, probably timed out relatively well in that there was some wholesalers holding onto a few gems that uh, will now become available. And uh, yeah, you've got a brand new shop with some uh, tanks looking no. to fill. So yeah. that'll work out pretty handy. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Oh, well, that's super, super cool. I'm really excited to see uh, the new shop and um, a massive, massive uh, tip of the cap to you because, I, I mean, I, I was going to say that having a facility like this here in your house filled with this number of amazing show-stopping corals is just no tiny feat it's a massive massive labor of love and then you've gone and just doubled down on that and said you know what that was too easy let's go and open a bricks and mortar store and uh, run that obviously you've got some assistance from some very talented people like michael park um, yeah. to make that happen it's it's one of those things that is going to require a, a team of uh, people so um you've surrounded yourself with the right people but uh, that's 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 what industry leaders do. So uh, congratulations and um, yeah, really look forward to seeing where things go from here. Yeah, no, look forward to seeing your viewers at the store opening too, I can't wait. Brilliant, excellent. Yeah. Thanks again so much. Great, thanks Sam. All right guys, there you have it. That was part two of Michael and Joe's incredible coral collection. I hope you can appreciate separating this video out into its own after last week's incredible hour and 20 minute long footage, just going over showstopper coral after showstopper coral. I wanted to make sure taking on your feedback from previous videos that we did not gloss over the equipment, the uh, parameters, the maintenance routine, and of course the reefing methodology that Michael follows. Now, I know reef moonshine is what's touched on quite a lot in this video, Video, but I've got to give a huge tip of the cap to Andre and the team there at Reef Moonshiners because I have never in my life seen so many corals that come from different biotopes around the world all put into a glass box in a closed ecosystem and to see them all looking as happy and healthy and thriving away as they did which it's got to be the best endorsement I can give for Reef Moonshine is to say that the program obviously works. And if you want to find out more information, you'll find it at Reef Moonshine is down here. I'll make sure you jump on there. Be sure to tell Andre if you do speak to the man himself, you saw it on Parker's Reef because um, I think he's doing great work over there. And uh, I really appreciate his approach to the methodologies, which does not force their products onto you, which I think is always a really good approach. Now, we cannot close the video off without talking about Reeftopia. Michael Park and of course Michael Zia going in together to make this incredible new local fish store up in Brisbane. You can be sure that I will be there for the grand opening. The date is yet to be set. They do not want to open the doors until everything is absolutely 100% perfect. And I appreciate that because I know just how difficult it is once you do open those doors to get to those backlog of projects. So um, as soon as that date's announced, you can rest assured that I'll be booking my tickets and I'll be heading up there. And I look forward to seeing you all there because um, there's going to be some great corals there. There's going to be some fantastic deals from different suppliers there and of course like I touched on in the video it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun I'm sure it'll be a good party all weekend long anyway guys I will wrap things up there I will just touch on that we are like 20 subscribers away from hitting 25,000 subscribers and uh, I can say that once we hit that mark I will be able to announce a special giveaway so um, don't be shy hit that subscribe button in the bottom left hand corner it takes two seconds of your time costs no money whatsoever I can assure you that other than that I don't think I have too much more to say other than to stay safe and keep reefing cheers guys bye Yeah, so the store is in partnership what with kind Michael. What information are you looking for? <laughs> Ask away. You serious? <laughs> that's cheesy. Oh my <laughs> that's God. funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um